Good evening, everyone. My name is Paul Young. I'm just going to walk you through the economy of Ontario as part of the 2018 election. Here's a little brief bio about myself. I'm a CPA CGA. I, let, I do these videos in a way to trying to get information out to people so they can make informed decisions. Now, in summary, the Liberals have been in power since about late 2003 into 2004. Now, I don't blame the Liberals for the 2008-2009 recession. So apart from that, I'm not going to shadow blame on it. But I will discuss policies, whether that's carbon tax, whether it's hydros, whether that's regulations, whether it's other user tax. I will talk about that at a high level because these all impact competitiveness and competitiveness what drives basically attraction in terms of foreign direct investments. This kind of gives you an idea where some of my focal point is on my agenda. Now, like anything else, the first two slides I'm going to call out a couple people. This Omar Khan worked for CBC and as you can see by his statement here, he's basically saying that under Premier Wynn, the employment numbers are good. But what he's not telling you about is a couple things. One is that basically the Jobs and Prosperity Fund is a stopgap fund done to basically help business. It's not fixing the systemic issues related to bad policy, whether that's carbon tax, labor reforms, uh, hydro rates, regulations, etc. The other thing he doesn't talk about is GDP itself has major components to it. So he's giving you a high level view of GDP, but what he's not telling you about is the components. And that's very dangerous when you look at a high level view because you need to look at all aspects of policy. So you need to look at the impact and individual aspects of GDP. Wynn was in t Ontario, and here's a good example of how, how she misleads people. She's got 46,000 jobs under her government in the goods producing sector. What she doesn't tell you is that 90,000 of those jobs were in construction. We've actually bled 44,000 jobs in the good, good producing area like manufacturing primary metal. She doesn't talk about that. Why? Because she can't get elected on talking about that. But what she can do is get quoted that and people think she's doing a good job. And in essence, she's not. The other thing too is we can attribute 75,000 of job losses under the liberal time frame directly to hydro rates. This gives you a good example of employment. So if you look at the good producing industry since 2004-2018, it's basically lost 170,000 jobs. Well, the service sector has picked up 101 million, close to 1 million two jobs, 200 jobs. What you're not going to see is that inside there is the the government's created about four, 360,000 jobs. So a good 40% of those jobs are government. You're also not seeing that the other aspects of the service sector, which are retail. Um, real estate and stuff like that, that's a little different in terms of compensation, which you're not hearing as well. I like to highlight the Jobs Prosperity Fund because it picks and chooses winners. There's some, some good companies where we've made some key investments in, and I'm not over going to undersell that. My more concern is, is we shouldn't have funds like this. We, all the money should go to everybody through some sort of R&D credits or innovation fund to encourage that. When you government tries to pick and choose winners, that's not its role. Its role is to define policy to encourage growth. Overall manufacturing, this gives you an idea of GDP. So what I basically looked at in 2003, our GDP was 150 billion. Of total GDP, in terms of percentage, it was 28%, about almost a third of our GDP was basically 30% of our GDP was goods producing. Fast forward now, 15 years later, 22% of our total GDP is good producing. The rest of it's moved into the service sector. So what you've seen is the liberal shift by losing manufacturing has gone to service sector. Those service sector jobs tend to pay 25, 30% less than the good producing sector. So that's why when you see a tie out to when we see incomes barely grew over the last decade under Wynne and McGinty is because their policies, not all of them, but some of their policies significant factored into why jobs have left this province. This kind of gives you an idea of the key components of manufacturing. I'm ignoring other because that other is just a catch-all bucket. I'm just focusing on the main areas. And if you look at that, 
if we took 2003 and compared it to where we are in 2013 or 2014 you're going to see that we've significantly dropped in all areas of manufacturing we've never really regained it back now we're slowly seeing it come back but in essence what's happening is is it's coming back but not the jobs Both automotive and Class A trucks, like when we looked at automotive back in 2008 prior to the recession, Ontario, where is the bulk of it, is about 17% of total manufacturing. We're now down to about 12%. Now, it's a fallacy to say that we've, the U.S. has taken that jobs. They've taken some of it. A lot of those jobs have gone to Mexico. Class A production, we used to have Sterling truck plants and a few other freight liners in Ontario. Those are all gone. Now, are we still producing stuff? Yeah, there's some trailer stuff here and that, but it's not far cry from where we were a decade ago. So that's something you won't hear. I pulled in steel because steel is carbon based. It gets impacted greatly by carbon tax. And you see in 2008 to the recession, we were up to about 15 million megatons of steel. We're only at 12 million now. So you're seeing we've lost steel production. That's something you won't hear from the Liberals either. Food processing sector, the Liberals have, is one sector that we've seen some growth, but we've also seen some struggles. We've seen Heinz close their plants down. We've seen other plants close down due to the hydro rates, due to other issues related to the government policies, but you'll never hear wind talk about that. Mining sector, wind seems to almost ignore anything north of uh, Toronto or the GTA so we've seen our mining investment go down because the Liberals are not interested in getting goods out of the ground now this is a recent trend so the US has changed their policies from regulations to taxation to encourage manufacturing so manufacturing is going through a rebirth in, in the US Canada is falling behind and a lot of that's to do with poor poorly constructed policies that the, the, both the Liberals at the federal and provincial level are saying are doing good jobs when they're not. The Liberals again try to encourage vehicles, but the incentives fail to deliver. And we're also have seen issues with plug-in stations. I have to bring an Ontario deficit and debt when you talk about the economy, because a structural deficit of $12 billion either has to be paid down, reduced either by higher taxes or cuts to program spending. So if you're a business and you see high government deficit and debt, you should, you're likely worried, are my taxes going up? This is now uh, a statement from a guy that never really looked at the details. So he's blaming basically the, the, the conservative government on how they handled it. But the reality is this, that these policies basically hurt business from hydro rates to more regulation. You'd be hard pressed to go to a, a local business and talk to them and not see the impact. So this kind of gets you understanding that despite all the high level of headlines that Kathleen Wynne gives you, the reality is her and McGinty's policies have done nothing but hurt business investment in this country, in this province. And when you make your decision at election time, I would ask significant questions of details back to the, your MP or your NP. MPP candidate in your riding to to get their clear statement of why they think their policies are working. So here's a couple things just to bear in mind of areas of focus. Low dollars tend to insulate business from global pressure, but it doesn't fix the systemic issues that you're faced with. Like we have high hydro uh, rates, we have red tape and delays projects, we've got broken arbitration systems, carbon tax, we've got the issue with innovation. You know, these are all key, key areas of things that you need to talk, discuss, and raise as part of the election. Thank you.